I am Elliot Lawrence, and I am the 4-H educator in Lucas County. And uh, we are going to be uh, swimming all over the uh, earth today in uh, quite a few, about four different oceans or four different areas. Uh, and we're going to be exploring all different types of sharks. So hopefully we have some shark lovers on the call uh, this afternoon. Uh, first up, we are going to go into uh, Fiji. And uh, Fiji is in the South Pacific and it has a rugged landscape of blue lagoons and palm lined beaches. Although it seems like a serene setting, this tropical oasis is home to one of the best shark dives in the world, featuring one of the most feared sharks of all, the bull shark, which is the shark that we see right here um, on the screen. First of all, right there it is. Bull sharks are thought to be the most dangerous uh, species of shark because they're very common, uh, they're aggressive, and they live near populated tropical shorelines. It also, they also frequently travel far inland up uh, freshland rivers. Um, so they're very uh, close to people. Um, they're around people quite a bit. They're one of the few sharks that are around people. Um, so they get this, uh, they get this really, um, they kind of get a bad rap of being very dangerous and very aggressive sharks. Sharks are uh, very ancient creatures uh, sharks are actually older than dinosaurs. If you visited us, if you visited the field trip we went on last week, uh, we talked all about dinosaurs. Sharks are actually older than those. The ancestry dating back to over 400 million years, uh, sharks have been around. These animals are uniquely adapted to the ocean because of six highly refined senses, including smell, hearing, touch, taste, sight, and electromagnetism. That electromagnetism helps them hunt down potential prey. The shark diversity, we're going to see a lot of different uh, shark uh, species today. There's over uh, 440 species of sharks, and uh, they've been recorded all around the world. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes and can be found everywhere from Fiji to Florida. There's a huge importance on sharks. A lot of people are afraid of them, but they're very important to the ecosystem and to the ocean. Sharks play an important role in the marine, in marine ecosystems. At the top of the aquatic food chain, they keep the populations of their prey stable, while also providing essential food sources for scavengers at the bottom, such as plants. So uh, sharks take care of smaller fish. If, if uh, the sharks did not eat the smaller fish or if we had a decline in, in shark population, um, there would be a, a problem with, uh, with the fish population. The fish population would become too large, um, then the ocean would be overcrowded um, and um, plant life would start to die. Uh, and there's this, this whole huge chain of reactions that could happen. Um, if sharks weren't around taking care of those smaller fish. Next up, we're gonna check out the whale shark. This is in the waters uh, outside of Mexico. And uh, the uh, Mexico's course is known for its beaches and water-based activities. Uh, this next uh, dive includes uh, the whale shark. And uh, here we get to meet the biggest fish in the ocean, the whale shark. It's a rare species thought to migrate extremely long distances. Whale sharks are the world's largest living species of fish. It's thought to fully, it's thought it's fully grown adults uh, can reach an incredible 20 meters in length and weigh up to 20 tons. That is a, that is a huge, uh, that is a huge shark. That's almost, um, that's almost the size of, uh, of a bus. Um, a little bit smaller, but it's, uh, it's pretty huge. It'd be amazing to see in person. Uh, whale sharks are actually pretty gentle creatures. Uh, they're, uh, the, the huge sharks look intimidating, but they're, di they're gentle and docile, and, and they're, really, they're harmless to humans. They don't bother us if, if we don't bother them. That's, that's the biggest thing about today, uh, you'll find out. A lot of these fish species, if they're not bothered, they're not going to bother us as well. They use their huge mouths up to a meter wide to filter plankton from the ocean. They mostly eat plankton from the ocean. Um, they don't eat uh, a lot of larger fish. They eat the really small plankton fish um, or plankton uh, species. And, and, uh, and so they don't, they don't really have to, we're not, we don't need to be bothered by the whale sharks, even though they're humongous. 
If you look up here in the front, way down there at the bottom, uh, you'll see uh, some, some little hitchhikers there. Uh, small fish often hitch rides alongside whale sharks. Although it may seem counterintuitive, the fish aren't in really any danger because the, uh, the, the sharks feed mostly off of plankton. In Mexico, manta rays like to keep company with sharks too. The cool thing about you know having a shark right on top, right as you're swimming under a giant shark, is there's a lot of other fish that are not going to bother you um, if you have that giant uh, shark um, there. It's kind of like having that big that big buddy uh, that that on the playground when you go out to recess. They're not other kids aren't going to bother you if you have somebody somebody bigger standing around and hanging around with you. So the conservation of whale sharks is something important that that uh, that needs to happen. Whale sharks are, are rare creatures and they're listed as a vulnerable, vulnerable to extinction. Um, they're uh, by the International Union of Conservation uh, of Nature. And it's on their, it's actually on their, the whale sharks are actually on their red list. A better understanding of their biology and ecology is needed to help these threatened species. So experts really aren't quite sure why uh, these, these whale sharks are, are becoming extinct. Um, and there needs to be more study um, done on the on the whale sharks before they do come extinct. Because of course, if a fish if a if a shark becomes extinct, then that throws off the entire food chain in the ocean, and uh, other things might happen um, that that might be detrimental to uh, to the ocean or to our ecosystem as well. Next up, we are going to we're going to check out a great white shark. Here we're in the cage with a cage diver. There's a great white. Great white might be one of the most popular species of sharks. Uh, cage dive with a hungry great white shark is on the bucket list of many um, that, that many people may not ever experience. Uh, in, this, in this one, uh, in this scene, we've, we've come to the cold waters of Port Lincoln in uh, South Australia to meet this ocean giant in its natural habitat behind steel bars, of course. And we have the added benefit. We're, we're behind a computer screen. We're, we're definitely not going to get any, uh, get any bites today. The great white shark showing right there, great whites are the largest predatory fish on earth. They have rows of over 300 shark teeth and an exceptional sense of smell and can detect any tiny amount of blood up to roughly five kilometers away. It's pretty crazy. Great whites are, uh, I believe, if you've ever seen the, the classic movie Jaws, uh, great white sharks are, uh, that, that uh, the shark, I, I'm pretty sure the shark that's in, in Jaws is, is, it's a fake shark, of course, but it's, it's modeled, it was modeled after a, a great white shark. Um, and in that movie, if you've ever seen that movie, it's kind of old, it's actually really old. Um, but uh, that, that movie, uh, shows how these great whites can really detect blood um, for, for a long, uh, for quite a distance. Great white sharks are actually a, a fairly curious sharks. Uh, they're kind of like, uh, they're kind of like a big giant uh, scary looking dog um, of the ocean. Great whites are earned, have earned a fearsome reputation, which isn't completely fair to the great white shark. Um, they're, these, uh, they're naturally curious sharks aren't preying on humans. They're biting to investigate something unfamiliar to them. Using their teeth is like what we do when we use our hands. So a lot of people don't, and it's crazy, it's crazy to think of this because as humans, we look at things with our, with our hands and, and uh, you know, look at them. With sharks, they, they can detect what they want, um, you know, can detect what, what it is that, that's in front of them with their teeth. And, um, so uh, they, they might not be chewing on something to kill it. Um, unfortunately, that is sometimes the side effect of a great white shark chewing on something is a lot of times it, it might kill the item, but uh, they're, not, they're not naturally uh, wanting to do that. So the, uh, the great white uh, shark is also on, um, should also be conserved and it's, on, and it's on the vulnerable to extinction list as well. Um, it's on the, it's on the, uh, the conservation of nature's uh, red list, um, the same as the whale shark. And uh, females reproduce once every two to three years. So it takes a long time to add members to the decreasing population. Usually um, most animals in nature uh, produce uh, at least once a year, if not several times a year. 
and um, and these sharks they they take a, a very long time to reproduce. So you have to think about uh, shark lives are not the same amount as what human lives are. So two to three years in, in a shark life is a pretty long time. And in those two two to three years, a shark might not be alive anymore. So some some of the um, some of the sharks might actually die without reproducing ever. Um, so uh, it's it's something we do have to we do have to think about, and we do have to uh, try to conserve the po the shark population. Um, it, and that's that's what uh, the experts are trying to do with with the sharks. That's why a lot of times um, there a lot of shark dives happen because it is it is exploring um, what's happening down there and and what their natural habitat is. And uh, aside from the great white, um, which, which as I said, is very uh, naturally curious, uh, most of the sharks won't bother um, any divers that, that go down to, uh, to their natural habitat because the sharks don't feel endangered by humans, most of them. So um, especially if you get to a size, a large size as a great white or, or the whale shark, they're not really, uh, they're not really in danger. Next up, we are going to uh, the, uh, the Coral Sea, which this is one of the, uh, the coolest uh, areas. Um, this is off the coast of the east coast of Australia. And uh, if, you, if you looked at the coral reef, um, uh, the coral reef virtual field trip uh, from been about three or four weeks ago, um, this is the same area um, that, that, that that trip was taken on. It was the, the Coral Sea. And um, it's, it's heavily fished, um, so that means there's a lot of fishing involved um, in, because it's, it's a, a very remote location. As a result, it's one of the best locations in the world to counter healthy populations of reef sharks, including the black tip reef shark. And so the black tip reef shark um, is actually what you're looking at right now. But first, we're going to go check out some shark tourism. It's, it's hugely popular in this area. It's estimated that 100 million sharks are killed by humans every year. Surprisingly, shark tourism is on the rise. People flock from all over the world to snorkel or to dive with these magnificent ocean creatures, which shark, shark dives aren't, aren't necessarily always bad. It's bad when when someone tries to kill um, the shark that is uh, that, that that they're that they're going down to view. It's okay to view the sharks, um, and uh, it's not okay to kill the sharks. Uh, they're, they're not going to hurt anybody. A lot of people, unfortunately, um, like to use sharks. They like to get sharks stuffed, and they like to keep sharks as uh, sharks as a uh, uh, you know as kind of like a, a token of of their dive of their trip or of their vacation. Um, they like to have these big giant sharks hanging in their house, and uh, that's not that's not a good thing. That's the bad part about shark tourism. Good part is finding out about sharks and visiting them in, in their natural habitat. That's okay. So the black tip reef shark, and right there is the black black tip reef shark. The black tip reef sharks are found cruising around coral. They are smaller than ocean, uh, ocean cousins, not growing any larger than two meters in length. And you think of a meter stick is about, uh, uh, it's about, about as big as a, as a yard stick. And, and so two, two of those is not, are not very, uh, not very large. Uh, they're, they're fairly small, fairly small sharks. Um, and uh, they are most commonly encountered shark species by scuba, diver, scuba, di scuba divers because they aren't um, and aren't a threat unless they are provoked. And so they, they, like, to, uh, they like to hang out around, around the scuba divers. Uh, you know, sharks in general, not only the, the great white, but sharks in general are very curious, um, kind of curious fish. And, uh, and so they, uh, they, they do, that's why the shark tourism is, tourism is so popular because they will come around you and, and they'll swim around you and they'll even come close enough where you can, uh, you can pet them. Um, and, uh, um, it, it's pretty. It's pretty cool experience. I've never done a shark dive, but it, I, I think it'd be a pretty neat experience. I'm going to talk a little bit about the breathing method. Uh, ocean sharks, like the black tip reef shark, most continually swim forwards. This forces seawater through their open mouths over their gills in order to breathe. Otherwise, they would suffocate. So it's it, like most other fish, um, when the water goes through their gills. 
the, the oxygen in water, because of course we know H2O is, is there's part oxygen in water, that oxygen in water is actually absorbed into their gills and absorbed into their, into their body. And that's actually how they, how they, um, uh, how they breathe. Uh, if, that, if those gills were not able to do that, um, they would not be able to breathe underwater. That's actually why fish and sharks and other uh, sea animals can breathe underwater because they can take in that water and it can extract the oxygen. As humans, we can't breathe underwater because our lungs cannot extract. Um, we don't have gills. Um, we don't have anything to be able to extract that oxygen out. So if we go underwater, we can either hold our breath or we're going to suffocate um, and, uh, and we're going to drown if we don't, uh, if, we, if we start taking in a lot of water. The remora fish, same as uh, over here, um, you can see a really good example of a remora fish. Um, the, uh, the, the remora fish, same as, as some of the smaller fish that like to cling on, the, uh, um, on, on some of the larger sharks, remora fish attach themselves to sharks with a suction disc on the top of their head. The remoras feed on parasites found on the shark's skin, which in turn benefits the sharks by keeping it clean and healthy. What a great arrangement. <laughs> you never have, can you imagine if humans were like that? They'd have some smaller, smaller human just kind of sucked on the side of them to keep them clean all the time. How crazy would that be? You wouldn't have to take showers anymore, though. That, that'd be a nice thing, right? Here's some shark encounters. One of the easiest ways to encounter sharks, and we'll try to find there's one there. A uh, place to encounter a shark is, is uh, in the wild is, is in Sydney, off the coast of Sydney, Australia. Uh, where they can usually be found resting on the ocean floor or sheltering under rocky ledges. There are, only 60, there are over 60 recorded species of sharks in the waters around Sydney, Australia. The Port Jackson shark is what we're looking at right now. Uh, port, this Port Jackson, Jackson shark is abundant in Sydney. It definitely isn't the scariest shark around since they usually don't grow larger than a meter and they don't have sharp pointy teeth. Uh, they're, mostly, uh, they're mostly herbivores, they mostly eat uh, vegetation, and so they don't have to have real sharp pointy teeth um, to, because they don't eat uh, any other fish. And they're, and they're pretty small. A uh, meter is, is uh, yeah, about that big, right? Uh, about, like I said, about the size of a, of a yardstick. And uh, so they're kind of, kind of small little guys. So down there in the bottom of the, uh, of the ocean floor, um, the, uh, this shark actually, the Port Jackson shark actually lays eggs. Uh, so the shark lays eggs. Um, and, uh, they, they, each species uh, has a different shape. Uh, so each species of eggs, when, if you go diving, uh, you can, and you see shark eggs, uh, experts would be able to know what kind of shark that would come from. I would not know what kind of shark that would come from, but, uh, experts would know what kind of shark that would come from. Uh, they lay the the port jarks, Jackson sharks lay spiral shaped eggs, um, so they can safely wedge them into rock crevices under until they hatch. So it's kind of neat that they're they're designed to be hidden and uh, safely tucked away. If you think about the ocean, there's a lot of other uh, fish and sharks and other species uh, running around, uh, swimming around all over the ocean, and uh, it's it's really hard to keep those eggs intact. Uh, it's another reason why uh, you know sharks uh, sometimes have a problem uh, with uh, procreating because uh, they the other animals will eat their eggs before they can even hatch. Next up, we have uh, also we're staying in in the Sydney, Australia area, um, and uh, this is uh, these are our gray nurse sharks. One of the easiest places to encounter a shark in the wild is Sydney, as I said, um, and uh, the. Uh, the, the gray nurse shark is, is one of the most menacing looking sharks. Look at how it just, it looks scary. That shark looks scary when a lot of times when pictures are drawn of sharks or, or, or um, there's animations of sharks, a lot of times they use the, 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 uh, the gray nurse shark as, as its main design because when you think of a shark, you think of something uh, look, that looks like that, uh, that, the gray shark or the nurse shark. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of scary looking, but they are harmless. They're not going to hurt us. 
Although gray nurse sharks do have rather large teeth and have rows and rows of razor sharp teeth, they're not considered dangerous to humans. They're rather uh, docile. They don't do a whole lot of, uh, they, they, they won't uh, hurt you as a human. Um, they, they, won't, they probably won't even, won't even pay attention to you. They might, they might uh, come over and see what you're doing, but that's about it. They uh, breed in the waters close to Sydney and provide a thrill to scuba divers. Um, so they're always, they're, they're, they're swimming around all the time and, and they're, um, they're very out and uh, open. Um, they're, they're a lot of a lot of times you they're easy to see in, in the ocean. So also once again the the, the we need to conserve these the the gray nurse sharks. Uh, in 1984, they were the first shark species in the world to be granted protected status. So this shark is protected in the fact that you can't uh, you can't kill this shark um, and you can't hunt the shark uh, for game or uh, you can't hunt the shark for meat. Um, that shark is, is, is protected because in the 80s, um, the shark population was decreasing. And, uh, and so they, they protected this species of shark and uh, they are not allowed to, no one is allowed to hunt them. So the reproduction of uh, the gray nurse shark, the survival of the fittest begins even before birth. The strongest embryo in the womb eats all of their siblings so that only one well-fed baby shark is born. It's pretty crazy. Can you, I, I've actually heard of that happening in humans before not necessarily eating, but uh, sometimes uh, a women will have uh, a twins um, at, uh, when, when they're first conceived. And by the end of their, uh, by, the, by the time they're born, there's only one child left uh, because the other, the other twin uh, absorbs uh, into, the, uh, into, the other, uh, into the other child during, during embryo or during the uh, incubation of the, of the child. So uh, that happens in, in sharks, uh, it's pretty crazy. Next up we have the white tip reef sharks. This is in the, uh, this is actually in the, uh, in the Philippines. And uh, there we go, there's a good, there's a good shot of the, of the white tip. See that tiny little white tip all the way on the, on the back fin. Uh, and the top fin also has a very tiny little white tip. Um, Tabatha in the Philippines was only discovered by scuba divers, scuba, diver, scuba divers, I don't know why I can't say scuba divers, divers today, as recently as the 1970s. Because of its remote location, there are fewer fishermen and the fish life is abundant. As a result, there are, oh, there are 14 species of sharks to be found in this one small area. So we've seen the the, uh, the UNESCO. Um, we've seen this quite a bit in, in several other uh, ver field trips we've done um, in the past couple of months. This is a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site. The huge diversity of sharks and other marine life in Tabatha, uh, Tabata, Tabata. If you watched last week's, you saw me butcher a lot of dinosaur names. I'm butchering this poor uh, country's name too, Tabatha led to the park uh, being declared a United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, otherwise known as UNESCO, World Heritage Site, in 1993. Um, so it's pretty cool that it, there, there's a lot of conservation that's done here. There's a lot of uh, scientific research that's done on this area. And, um, and it's protected by, uh, by fishing and protected by uh, hunting uh, sharks. Um, so none of that can take place in here. So in this image, you'll see some white tip reef sharks cruising along the reef looking for prey. This species of shark is timid and not a danger to humans, but they are curious and likely to investigate scuba divers. That's once again, like I said, that's why one of, uh, that's why the uh, shark diving is so popular because a lot of fish and a lot of marine life will not come close to scuba divers because they're afraid of them. Uh, sharks are not afraid of them, or I'm not sure if they're not afraid of them, or they're just, uh, they're very curious animals, so, so they like to, to swim over and see what's going on, um, so they will, uh, they'll come over and, and, uh, and check out what you're doing, and, uh, and see, uh, you know, and come over and say hi, and they'll let you pet them, and uh, so that's why it's very popular among scuba dive trips. Uh, so next up, uh, the, 
as I said, if you saw early, if you saw a couple, a few weeks ago, I did an entire virtual field trip, and I'll give you a plug for that one. It's a coral reef uh, field trip talking about um, the coral reef habitat. It's actually one of the most uh, viewed um, videos I have of all the field trips. Uh, it must have been very popular. And uh, it's, uh, you can view that on, on uh, you can find the link on our website, lucas.osu.edu slash 4-H, and uh, you can check out that there. Um, but uh, this is a very healthy looking coral um, here. And that's, that's very important for the white tip sharks uh, because a lot of smaller fish and a lot of things that the, the white tip sharks uh, eat um, live around the coral. So that's why they kind of cruise, uh, cruise through the coral areas and, and cruise right over the coral areas uh, because they never know when some smaller fish or uh, plankton or something like that's gonna pop up and, and, uh, and they can have some lunch. Uh, the healthy coral reef seen here means that there are plenty of small reef fish to be found. And, and then it, of course, as that chain of things happen in the ocean, Smaller fish attract bigger fish, attract bigger fish, attract bigger fish, and it kind of keeps on going. So it's a very diverse area. Coral reefs are interesting because they're very diverse. Um, a lot of different species of animals and species of fish um, belong in, in, in coral reefs. And uh, it's, uh, and of course, they attract a lot of sharks, uh, coral reefs. That's why there's several different types of reef sharks. Um, this is uh, the, the, the coral reef, uh, it leads to a very, very good and balanced ecosystem um, where the, the smaller fish get eat, eaten by the little fish and, and the smaller fish are eating um, some bio life in, in, on, the plant, on, the, uh, on the coral. And so everything kind of goes around and uh, in, in full circle. And then of course the coral is acting as a giant filter for the ocean. And so anything bad that us humans uh, put into the ocean, the coral is doing a really, really good job or trying to do a good job of filtering out all of that, all of that nasty stuff, and um, and making making the ocean clean. So that is that is the end of swimming with the sharks today. Thanks a lot, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know, and um, I'll try to answer them for you. Anybody have any questions? Let me see if I can. I'll pull up the chat box real quick and see if. Don't see anything in there. One real quick thing before you do go, I would like you to uh, complete um, the evaluation survey. Um, it is a very easy survey. It is not, um, it's not long at all. It's about uh, five, five or so questions. Um, so it's, uh, it's very short and um,